In this tutorial, we'll cover word problems or real world problems. Now, did seeing and hearing that title cause you some anxiety? From middle schoolers right up to adults, I find that as soon as a class sees or hears word problems, half the class gets a stressed look on their face and I start hearing whispers, man, I can't do word problems. Relax. We're going to figure this out. I guarantee that if you follow along here and do the practice, you will become a better problem solver. And this will help you in all of your future math and science courses. Let's do some word problem examples to give you a feel for the variety of word problems that are commonly asked. And in all of them, we'll follow the exact same steps. 1. Read the question carefully and summarize. In some simple word problems, reading it through once is good enough. But in most of them, we'll need to read it two or three times to get it perfectly clear in our heads. Either way, it's always good to make a few notes as you read it, or draw a quick sketch, or something to get it all clear in your head. 2. Note the variable, or variables. Decide what you're looking for and make a note of it. So often, if this isn't done, you get to the end of the word problem and you spend a bunch of time trying to figure out what you really solved and what it really means. Clarify it all right away. That'll help you with setting up the problem and will definitely help you with being clear when you get to the end of the problem. 3. Translate and solve. And this is where you convert it from a word problem into an equation. Being familiar with some key words is really important for making this work well. You're converting from English to algebra. Being familiar with key terms is essential. We'll cover many of these. 4. Ensure you've answered the question. Take another look back at the question and ensure that the variable you solved is the final answer. Often you forget that there may be more than one part to the question, and you need to determine both parts using your solved variable. Refer back and ensure that you've answered the question. So, we're ready to look at some examples. Example 1. The sum of two consecutive integers is 41. Determine the integers. So our first step, read it carefully and make some notes. Well, it's fairly short, but there are some challenges. Our first challenge is that term consecutive integers. Consecutive integers would be one after the other. So three and four would be consecutive integers. 101 and 102 would also be consecutive integers in that 102 is 1 bigger than 101. So consecutive integers mean that the bigger number is always 1 bigger than the previous one. And we also see from our question that our two numbers have to add to 41. Remember, sum means addition. So, on to step 2. We can go back and read it again, but do we have a good idea for setting the variable? Let's see. If we say that the variable is x, and that x equals the smaller number, then our larger number should be 1 bigger. So, x plus 1 could be our larger number. Documenting it like this will help us set up the problem, and will definitely help us sort it out in the end. We're on to step 3. Translate and solve. So, we're told that the sum is 41. So the smaller number x plus the bigger number x plus 1 has to equal 41. And it's time to solve. So we can bring the x's together. 2x plus 1 equals 41. And we're on to isolating that variable x. So we'll subtract 1 from both sides, keeping it balanced. 2x equals 40. We're multiplying by 2, so let's divide by 2, and we have x equals 20. So x equals 20 is our answer. Can we just leave it like this? No. We wouldn't have the full answer nor full marks if we just left it like this. So step 4. Let's refer back to the question. It says, determine the integers. So what is that x equals 20 telling us then? We documented that x equals the smaller number. 
So our smaller number is 20. Great. But to fully answer the question, we also need to provide the larger number. We documented that x plus 1 is the larger number. So our larger number here is 20 plus 1, or 21. So our two numbers are 20 and 21. And yes, we can confirm they are consecutive, and if we add them, we get 41. So perfect, we've confirmed. Example 2. Amber is three years older than her sister Alice. Their combined age is 35. What is the age of each girl? Our first step, read it carefully and make some notes. We have Amber and Alice sisters, and Amber's older by three years, and their combined age is 35. So on to step two. We may go back and read it again, but did we get an idea for the variable? Let's see, if we say that our variable is x, and that x is the age of Alice, the younger sister, then the age for Amber is three years more than that, or x plus three. Now, could we have made x equals Amber's age, the older sister, and then Alice would be x minus three, or three years younger? You bet. Either way would work perfect. Choose the approach that makes most sense to you, and just make sure you document it so you're clear in the end. We're going to go ahead with our plan here. We're on to step three. Translate and solve. We're told that the combined age is 35. So Amber's age, that is x plus 3, plus Alice's age, x, comes out to be 35. And we're ready to solve. We can bring the x's together and we have 2x plus 3 equals 35. And we isolate the variable. Let's subtract 3 from both sides, keeping it balanced. And we have 2x equals 32. We're multiplying by 2, so let's divide by 2. And we end up with x equals 16. So is x equals 16 our answer? Can we just leave it like this? We wouldn't get full marks out of that. We have to go back, step 4, to the original equation and check. We're asked, what is the age of each girl? So the x equals 16, well that tells us Alice's age. So Alice is 16. But we still need to provide Amber's age. And we documented that x plus 3 is Amber's age. So Amber equals 16 plus 3 or 19. Amber is indeed 3 years older than Alice, 16 versus 19. And if we add 16 and 19, we get 35. So confirmed. In this tutorial, we established a strategy for solving word problems. Our steps are 1. Read the question carefully and summarize. 2. Note the variable or variables. 3. Translate and solve. And 4. Ensure you've answered the question. Now, memorizing these steps and watching examples will provide you with a good strategy but they will not make you a good problem solver. That's only the beginning. Practice is what makes you good at word problems. Do as many problems as you can. With enough practice, you will be able to feel comfortable with word problems.